Okay, let's keep the engine running. Welcome back to the 20th video in the series. We recently had a major lecture on the process and workflow of 3D modeling. And now we are having a series of shorter follow-up videos where we are discussing uh, techniques and tools that came up in that big lecture, but that we have not yet covered together. Now, in the previous video, we discussed mostly techniques that can greatly improve your efficiency while 3D modeling. And also, in the next three or four videos, we'll cover some more useful techniques. But right after, spoiler alert, we'll dive right into lighting and cinematics. For that reason, today we are getting a little taste of that. To keep things spiced up. So today's topic are HDRIs, how to set them up and more importantly how to hack them. All right so multi-exposure HDR capture or for short HDRI which stands for high dynamic range image are absolutely fundamental to achieve a professional look in a render to achieve high quality results because they provide not just the visual background that makes the reflections look realistic for example but also important lighting information that is synced up with those visuals however hdris are like your best and worst enemy like a double-edged sword they can make a scene or they can break it when they get in the way, unless you know how to handle them, which is what we are learning today. So, suppose that you have a scene, regardless of the subject, in the default scene you will find information about the world in the properties panel, right here, but you can also find this information if you open up the shader editor and then you move from the shader type object to the shader type world. Now what you'll have in here is a setup that looks much more like the one that you have when you're designing materials and by default you will have a node called background and that will be hooked up to the world output. Now, when you have this very basic setup, if the model looks good, if the lighting looks good, that might be enough. But having an HDRI can be that extra touch that brings the quality up to 12. So the basic thing that you need to set up an HDRI is that it all comes up like a texture right after this background node. And so I already have one set up here to demonstrate you the difference that an HDRI can make. And so as you can see, as soon as you have the HDRI in, there is so much more detail that is coming out of the same 3D model. The quality has improved instantly. But here is the problem. Suppose that you have a phenomenal 3D model and then you want to take a good render of it, maybe an animation where the camera moves a lot. And then you have a problem that the HDRI, although it provides great quality to the whole render, it just doesn't fit. So I have this door behind that I really don't want in my shot. Or if I turn this way, in this case, for example, I have a window and it's totally off the scale. It's messing up with the composition of the shot. To get rid of it, the first hack that you need to know, it's very simple, but like all things simple, it's powerful. You are going to go to render, scroll down until you find the film tab and just click on transparent. This is so small a detail and yet it's like a lifesaver because now when you render this, the background will be fully transparent. 
So you can do all sorts of things. You can fill it in with the kind of background that you want and need for the specific shot that you are taking. <laughs> but of course, it doesn't hand here. There's so much more that you can actually do with HDRIs. Now, if you're wondering, well, this is all fantastic, but where do I get an HDRI? Well, the number one resource that every 3D modeler has is Polyheaven. Now, Polyheaven is like the number one repository for HDRIs. They are free. It's just this fantastic resource that every pro knows about and every pro uses. And this is just a great community where awesome people create these captures out there when there's a really nice sunset or a really nice environment. They capture those HDRIs at insanely high quality and resolution and then they share them for free. That's just awesome. So if you click on one of those HDRIs on Polyheaven, you will be brought to the page of it where you can see some previews of it. This one is called Kiara One Dawn and it was taken by this Greg Zale and it just looks amazing. And then you have some more pictures that kind of give you a sense of what it might look like in a 3D scene. So this one right here is a 3D scene, it's not a photo, and they have set up that specific HDRI, and this is the kind of lighting and reflections that you can expect when using this HDRI. Now HDRI can come in different resolutions depending on what are your needs, and also in different formats. Either one are fine for Blender. Okay, so we are back in Blender and now I'm gonna show you one, how to set up properly an HDRI because a ton of people get it wrong. And number two, later on, I'm gonna show you how to actually blur the background because sometimes you don't want the background to be just completely gone but you also maybe want it to be a little bit out of focus and sometimes the camera is not enough sometimes you want to blur that background and that is also gonna contribute in the way that the reflections behave okay so here's the deal a lot of people download the hdri and then they drag and drop it in this tab However, Blender doesn't know that this is an HDRI because the EXR format or also the HDR format can also be used for other things. So as a default, it comes in through a regular texture node and you don't want this. What you want is to press Shift A, search environment texture, and then you're going to have something like this. At which point you can click here and find the same file that you just imported and that now is inside Blender. Now the reason why this node is special and it is the correct one for HDRIs is because it has an equirectangular projection mode. This is what you want to showcase the world around you. Now, I went ahead and already imported the same exact HDRI that you saw on Polyevin just before. And I'm gonna hook it up and you're gonna see how beautiful this is. And so once again, HDRIs are just a fantastic way to really bring your work to the next level. Now, all these other nodes that you're seeing here are a little bit fancier ways to further control how the HDRI is set up. So I have some RGB curves that allow me to control all the channels or just specific channels. And now you know very well what an RGB channel is. And then we have something called mapping and texture coordinates. So these two nodes always come together 
And what we're doing is that we are passing some spatial information to this mapping node, and then we are using it to tell Blender the orientation of the world. So right now I have it turned 137 degrees, but I could put in 90 and this would rotate for me the environment. And with it, remember that the light also rotates because the light information is synced with the visuals in the HDRI. Now, something else that I have over here is a hue saturation value node. And this allows you to manipulate the hue saturation and value of the information that is passing through it. So for example, if I were to bring down the saturation to zero, I would have a totally black and white lighting and background. So this could be great, for example, if you are working on something that looks like maybe a noir film or some black and white photography. And you can also exceed one. You can go crazy and put in two and that will create just really intense colors. Look at that. That just feels like a truly beautiful sunset. That's just amazing. Now, like I mentioned before, one more hack that I wanted to show you is how to blur a background. And you have had this in your free project file all along. We have been using this without knowing about it since the very beginning. But basically, all that is happening is this. Let's start from the right. You have the world output, which is receiving information on what it should output in the 3D viewport. You have the background node that takes the visuals and then sort of regulates the strength of the lighting. You then have the actual environment texture that is doing the equirectangular projection. And then you have the mapping node that is passing the vector. And remember that a vector is like a bundle of three values. So it has to do with X, Y, and Z. And all that is happening between the mapping node and the texture coordinate, which is where everything begins, is that we are introducing some noise texture and some mathematics. And so fundamentally, what you need to understand is that we are creating the noise and then we are using that noise to sort of distort the background. And that is what creates the blurred effect when you do it at a large enough scale. So right here, we're using a huge number, 50,000. And you can play with these values in the project file that you have. And you'll see how they affect directly the distortion of the background. Now, of course, if I were to bring the scale to zero, it would be like not having any noise. And as you can see, all the distortion and the blurred effect is now gone. Okay, so before we wrap up this video, here is a little known fact and one more hack about HDRIs. So right now we are in the rendered viewport shading, right? And we are previewing the HDRI that we have set up. However, it is totally possible to kind of hack Blender and bring your own custom HDRIs inside the material preview. So now and forevermore, you have access to that HDRI whenever you are in preview mode. And this is something that has to do with Blender, not with the specific file you're working in. So if you have an HDRI that you absolutely love, like this one, you can bring it in Blender and have it right there always, just like you always have these few presets. Now, one way you could go about it could be clicking over here. And then from here, you could go through the process of installing it. But I am a little bit old school. And so I like to do things a little bit more in a manual way. So you can find in program files, a folder named Blender Foundation. 
Inside, you will have all the versions of Blender that you have installed on your machine. In this case, Blender 4.4. And then you want to click through some more subfolders. In this case, 4.4, Data Files, Studio Lights, and then World. And this is where all those HDRIs that you see as presets live on your computer. And you can copy and paste your own HDRIs in here. And the next time you reboot Blender, they will show up in the menu. <laughs> All right. So that officially wraps it up. And I'm going to leave you with this majestic view of a sunset on fire. And I'll catch you in the next video.